Dead and long day behind you. Good times lie ahead. With comfort for thee, with worth of keeping. Death and a bash of smile in your head. Cogsley's drunk again. And now we know why Cogs or why the rum's always gone. Cogsley's been into it. It's uh, yeah. There we go. It's uh, okay. Welcome to uh, the what? I was going to respond to Dave. Um, oh. we can't all sing it together, Dave, because we can't hear it. True story. The audience hears it. The co-hosts do not. They hear it echoing through my mic a little bit, but not a lot. Okay, so welcome to Talk of the Tavern. Tonight's topic is movies we want. So we'll get into that in a few minutes. I want to let everybody know it is an adult podcast, an adult topics, language, and humor. So if you love being offended, you're dumb and your mother dresses you funny. Welcome to the Tavern. Other than that, I am Travis Sivark. Tonight, my vices, and by the way, for chat, please put your vices right there in chat so we can read them off in a moment. For my vices, I have Bacardi and Coke and a beautiful CAO Amazonia cigar. It's, it's very nice. Now, let's move over here and let the co-host introduce himself. Let's start with Ed, please. Hey. Hi, people. I'm Ed. I am drinking uh, Bold Rock. Oh, yeah. Pineapple. Right. It's good. How about you, Kevin, my brother from across the ocean? He's Kevin, muted. You're muted. Hey, Kevin. He's hey, muted. Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Unmute yourself before you muted. talk. One more. Ah. Now, now, turn your video back on. Jo joining you this evening in the standard lockdown Zoom meeting style of forgetting I've muted myself uh, i'm drinking a trevento argentinian malbec this evening uh i've nearly finished this first bottle which we started on our last podcast so i'll be carving my way through the second bottle and spewing illiterate filth <clears throat> by the end of this hour pardon me kevin would you be kind enough to turn your video back on <laughs> i would <laughs> He's no longer just the voice there of the go. Isle of Wight, but also now the face. Uh, Who you it's the voice of the Isle of Wight. I think that would scare the local populace into emigrating. Be a nicer island if you had less people. So, why don't oh, you... Dear. Who are you passing it on to, Kev? I will pass it over to my hirsute brother, Chris. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris. Uh, yep. That's <laughs> no vices. Uh, I, I am drinking the wonderfully unfiltered apple juice from the uh, classic vintage 2020. <laughs> well, you're running a risk with that, aren't you? This time is a particularly good year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. He said, smugly pouring his mouth back. And saving the best for last, how about you, Andrea? Oh, well, tonight my vice is Harry Housing Cat on my lap and a glass of tea. There you go. Let me read some of the vices of chat. Now, just so everybody listening to the podcast knows, we have a live interactive audience here as we record on twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk. That's twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk. And we interact with them. We read their comments and their input as long as just so chat knows it is entertaining and or relevant to what we're doing so hot diggity dave says water and homemade beef jerky yeah. that feels like sexual connotation which is not a movie i'd want to see but moving on to <laughs> flaming bird she says mine were giant cookie and milk but they're all gone now little piggy face <laughs> Jules no. is drinking Propel Fitness watermelon flavor. Flavor so juicy, I thought I'd 
dop out seeds, spit out seeds, probably meant spit out seeds. Um, <laughs> clearly, Kevin has had more to drink than he confesses, says Flaming Bird, and that's, that's all That's all the vices we've got in there. So, <laughs> tonight's topic is movies we want. So, this was actually, oh, Toast, thank you, Ed. Ed, calling me, calling me on this. Thank you very much, Ed. Appreciate that. Let's do a toast. We're going to do two toasts. One, our drunken bot, Cogsley. We'll suggest. Let's start with his. Um, success is not measured so much by the position that one has reached in life as by the obstacles he has to overcome while trying to succeed. Booker T. Washington. Fair point. You rise by kicking ass, not where you got to. Or maybe. Well, yeah. Andrea, why were you sitting with Mr. Bill? I didn't mean to. <laughs> Now, our personal toast, because we love to drink twice every time we can, is uh, mm -hmm. here's to the chance that the mm -hmm. entertainment industry will lend an ear and actually produce what people want to drive the trends as opposed to following the trends thinking it's what people want. Yeah. Yeah, I dream big. Okay, so that's right, Flaming Bird. So tonight's topic being movies we want, this is basically, and, and it can go anywhere from, hell, from podcasts and morning radio shows to TV to movies. Because when we say movies now, let's face it, with streaming services, when you get 12 or 20 episodes of something that's all interconnected, that's one big, long movie. It might be episodic, but it is one overarching story quite often nowadays. And so that counts towards this. And just anything we'd like to see, whether it's, I don't think a lot of us are going to throw this in, maybe a reboot, maybe a continuation of an older movie, or just what we haven't seen before. Um, one thing I don't want to ever see is Bambi mating season. Um, thank you, Kevin, for whipping your bits out and putting them all over the screen. It happens when I've been drinking, apparently. Hey, excellent. Let's do another toast here. Here's to Kevin drinking. <laughs> yeah, cheers. <laughs> there we go. And for the podcast, folks, just so you know, the bits are basically people tipping the tavern. Look at that. Dave throwing up his bits on the screen there. There's to Dave's big old. <laughs> he's, trying to, he's trying to buy my shit. <laughs> he, he'll make it to the poo emoji soon enough. Yeah, honey. You know Come on. It's true. Okay, so what about you guys? Has there been something you've seen or haven't seen that you'd like to see different or at all? Hawkman, baby. Bring it on, DC. Come on, bring it on. I want to see some damn Hawkman. Ed, actually, I think that'd be a great movie because something I'm always saying is stop giving us primary characters. Give us secondary and third tier characters, and I think Hawkman would fall beautifully into that. Mm -hmm. And if you give Hawkman a Batman level story, how awesome would that be? Well, let's find out. <laughs> now, I now, mean, I'd love a Green Lantern series movie that is not, you know. Finally. Look, you've got cool special effects. Oh, fuck, we forgot to write a good story. Let's just cram some shit in there. <laughs> like. Green Lantern started out good, and then you got somewhere 45 minutes in, and things started going downhill. And it was like, oh, yes, I get it. You've made this really cool looking special effect. I, I'm going to knock us away from bitching about other movies towards talking about what we do want to see. But before I do knock us back, here's what I'll say I love Ryan Reynolds. He's not Green Lantern and never should have been. No. Um, so I agree with you, Chris. But, uh, and by the way, Hot Diggity Day says Plastic Man. 20 bucks is 20 bucks. That's fair. But even Ryan, as we've all seen with Deadpool stuff, will bitch about the Green yeah. Lantern movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was an example of Hollywood not listening to their audience. And by the way, Disney has recognized this. Kevin, I'll pass it to you in just a second, buddy. 
Disney has recognized this, saying if they do more Star Wars movies, they're going to stop trying to kowtow to the politics and the trends and listen to the fan base and try to put out something they want. Now, if that'll hold up or not, we'll see. But I feel Disney with the Muppets and the Marvel movies, etc., and even Star Wars for me, they've done a fairly decent job, if not an excellent job, in most of the things they've bought up and produced. Kevin? What do you got? When you guys contacted me about the show and we came up with the topics for tonight. Um, you mean like three hours ago? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving up the way of the trade secrets. My bad. Go on. Um, one of the questions that occurred to me was, I, I know the topic is more based around movies that we want to see. But my question is, do we want to see specific movies? Or based on other conversations we've had about the movie genre before, do what is what we really want to see a change in attitude from movie makers towards their audience? Well, yes, oh. and was was that it? Oh, right. But also yeah, neither, because here's the deal: if you sit here and you poll the whole fucking audience for what they want, you're gonna have this nasty ass mess of confusion. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is, there's a few basic building blocks. An interesting character, a good storyline, <laughs> right. uh, reasonable uh, effects. Perhaps, if I could be more specific, mm -hmm. then, rather than do we want to just see a change in attitude, do we want to see them stop treating the audience by the lowest common denominator? Yes and no. I would say don't aim for the top 5%. But let's aim above 50, please. Yeah, that's my point, is yeah. I get this feeling really recently, especially in the last decade or more, that there's been this real trend to dumb everything down towards the lowest possible percentile to increase the maximum number of asses on seats in a cinema to go and watch it, because it's right. about dollar, not content. Right. Let's look at and I understand that from a commercial point of view, but I would like to see the bias shifted a little bit more in favor of people with brains. Let's look at That's Terminator I mean, Two. Some of those like movie remakes or movies that like re encapsulate in the first twenty minutes the thing that like they're making a movie out of this thing and you get a weird yeah. condensed version or in some cases completely out of canon change that is now officially canon because it's in the movies of whatever this genre of movies was that now has to be accepted because they're trying to make up that lower 50% of people who have never seen it. And it's like, you just changed 30 years of history of this franchise so that- So that somebody who's only just seen this movie can identify right. with it, yeah. Right. Okay. I'm trying to think I was of where I was- about to say something about Terminator. Yeah, let's look at Terminator 2. Okay, Terminator 1 was good. Terminator 2 was awesome. And every Terminator movie after never matched it. Some of them no. far missed that bar. Others <laughs> came close, came close. Um, <clears throat> I think the, the last one, was it not Terminator Genesis? What was the last one where they brought... Was it Genesis? I think it was Genesis, yeah. Um, isn't like Matt Smith the, the villain or... David Tennant, like Doctor yeah. Who is the Terminator in that one. Right, and uh, I, I I, mean they brought, what's her name back, Ed? Linda Hamilton? Yeah, Linda Hamilton. Um, and I yeah, think that, that raised <laughs> the bar from a few of the other movies. Um, though the movie right... Still missed. It did miss, and the movie right before it missed a little more, but was still better than like 3 and 4. Um, yeah. So, now, I don't want to talk a lot about those movies, but this is the comparison I want to give. If you're going to make a part two, let's raise that bar instead of dumbing it down and churning out crap. If you can't put out a good movie, if you're filling seats because you got the name or the part three on the back of it, you're doing it wrong. Um, or, tell you what, put it straight to Netflix, please. Whatever. You can make it. Just don't. Mm-hmm. Try to make it the blockbuster. Better yet, and by the way, here's something I want. I loved Game of Thrones Season 1. It really did well to the book. 
Um, but beyond that, it really just keeps on kind of like winding off the path, like a wobbly tire on your bike when you're a kid and you just keep on going off the path. It stands alone, but if you're a fan of the books, they could have done a season per book and stuck to the actual story, cutting out the fat, because there's a lot of fat in George R.R. R. Martin's books. Um, and, and done okay. Kevin, I saw you making a wincing face. Do you want to throw in on this? or? Uh, only a little bit. I mean, I kind of get your point there. The, the Game of Thrones is a bit of a weird one. Up to a, a certain point, what you get very accurately represents the books. There is a bit of a weird shift because the way George R. R. Martin writes the books, you have two consecutive books that cover the same period of chronological time. And one covers events in Westeros, and then the next preceding book covers events during the same time period abroad in Illyria and other places. And so the TV series took both those books, combined them, then split them in half chronologically so they made sense for a TV right. audience. And that's Rather fair. than expecting them. Yeah, which, which made sense. Then towards the end, you get another shift where you've got Martin hasn't even written the books. He hands over all of his notes under the deal with HBO. They make the series to the end based on his premise of how he's going to finish it. So you've got three very different sets of emphasis. Yeah. But I, get you, I get the point that you're trying to make, though, yeah. Well, if you took Harry Potter and turned it into a 12 or more series that are hour-long per episode, if you took Wheel of Time and turned each book into a 15 or 16 episode series where you're now getting 13 hours for that movie, or Dune would be a good example to do this with. And by the way... Just because it's a classic book that sell like sold like hotcakes doesn't mean it's the best story to choose for a series or a movie anymore. I'm looking at you, Dune. Um, you you made a very good example there, though. I mean, I sorry, I know there's been a couple of abortive attempts made at it, but Wheel of Time by Robert yeah, Jordan. Yeah, Thir thirteen books, and each book quite in depth with an awful lot of pace and right. an awful lot of events happening within cover to cover. That's a phenomenal task for anyone to try and copy accurately to screen. Well, you don't have to because once you hit book four or five, you can skip every other book. <laughs> because yeah. every other book yeah, moves the story forward and the other one just gets clogged <laughs> down in the minutiae and politics that you can... Mm -hmm. So you could probably read about the best bits <laughs> to a point. But when I read eight pages of how they're sitting in the tent for the Ascendi meeting, I didn't fucking care. I don't care that the blues were over here, but this color and that color mixed. And I don't care. I mean, yes, it's important, but I don't need that. Tolkien did this. Who, who, who doesn't get extraordinarily excited by the inner workings of the politics of the air, said I. I could be wrong on this <clears throat> one. You might have me. Well, I mean, that's... <laughs> I'm, I'm sticking the barb in as a dedicated Wheel of Fan, a uh, Wheel of Time fan. Chris, what were you going to say? That's the problem. I would love to see a Dresden movie or a new oh, Dresden yeah. series because the one sci-fi did was a very weird bastardization that if you take it on its own and say that it is loosely based on this thing, it was a great, like, right. for TV wizard crime series. It had nothing to do with the books and was just pretty much character names at it, that point. It had elements and milestones, but not story. Right. You know. Correct. It, yeah, it had right. that hint, that tint, that flavor, that seasoning, and those three things that happened. <laughs> right. And but that's the problem is like there he's on book fifteen just came out. Like that's that is a lot of things to condense into a movie, even if it was a, like, Netflix series. Again, right. that's, like you're saying, 130, 140 hours worth of, like, you know, content. Do it Disney and... Plus style. Turn each book into six episodes per season. Or 12, yeah. or 11, or whatever. You don't have to go to the full 20. Um, But you could take it down to eight. And get a reasonable, yeah. you know, 
Um, here's let me let me point this out for anybody that watches the superhero movies. Go watch Justice League and then go watch Zack Snyder's Justice League. Mm. No spoilers here, but here's what I'm going to tell you. It really slows it down. And it slows it down to the point where you're like, there's Andrea's like, they're singing a lot in this one. What's with that? <laughs> but, but. Go ahead. Andrea. But it includes a lot more of the story that they cut out and it makes sense now. Mm-hmm. And Andrea and I haven't even watched it through because the beautiful part for somebody considering it's four hours and two minutes but they break it into five parts in an epilogue if i'm not mistaken yeah guys am i getting I, that right i think it's mm-hmm. five yeah. okay so yeah. my point is andrea and i'll watch part one or part two and then stop it like we do a series right we don't so instead of watching a series show that night we just watch right and yeah, we're only two parts in, and yeah, it opens it up amazingly. You're getting so much more, and this is not a yeah. spoiler. This is a revelation that'll make you go, oh, thank God. Steppenwolf, they mentioned Dark Side and why he's on Earth instead of just, he's on Earth. Right. Yeah, why? There's a purpose, that, that would... and so I don't feel so lost because I didn't read the comics and right. things, so I didn't know the background. But this is a way to do it right. Um, now, I haven't watched the whole thing, but everybody that has Kevin, Ed, Laura, who's in poker with us, um, they're all like, yes, 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 so much more. And apparently you get a lot more Flash. I'm thrilled by that. I haven't seen that yet, but loving. Flash is great. He is. I, I've pretty much liked every iteration of Flash. Though we could be iffy on the 90s one. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that they brought him back as Flash's father from Earth One in the T V series on the CW. Or no, I'm sorry, well, the other see, Flash. Go ahead. Okay. I'm gonna take you off of that because okay. you wanna the the um topic is yeah. movies we wanna see. You're going with movies that are here. I've got a list. Okay. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> so one I Movies I would like to see more of is the Hitchcock style black and white oh. movies without all the gore and flashy stuff. This, uh, may I interrupt? Mm-hmm. If you watch Asian horror versus American horror, there's a lot less gore, but you're on the fucking edge of your seat a lot more. Than you are with a mm-hmm. slasher flick. Like that, Andrea? Go on with your yes. list. Well, I mean, I want to see more of that. Mm-hmm. Um, feel free to talk amongst yourselves, but that's mm-hmm. just. Yeah, one interrupt, of- jump in, guys, if you want, because basically. I, I, I get what you're saying, though. Yeah, that there's this really strong preponderance these days. The only way you can make a good movie is if you've got great special effects, great CGI, great this, that, the other. Back in the day when you only had a camera with no color, you had to rely on acting talent, good content, good story to carry a concept across. And now we've got all these artificial ways to insert that into a movie. We've lost the the pure essence of storytelling. Yeah. Well, and with a lot of them, it's camera angles, and you know the way the set is built that gives you that that a lot of of movies now they just use special effects or CG perspective like that, that's the argument mm-hmm. of CG versus uh, <clears throat> physical effects Chris what's it called when you actually create a costume instead mm-hmm. of CG it I mean it's just a physical effect it's mm-hmm. costuming props no there's a certain phrase like for example when Lucasfilm went we're doing real rubber mass with mechanics in it instead of CGing. That was called... Anybody? Prosthetic? Yeah. It's, it's robotics, puppeteering. No, it's... it's... I, I don't know what the word you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, I, I got that. Um, <laughs> go on. Oh, okay. So, I don't know if anybody's ever read um, The Peregrine. You know mm-hmm. what I'm talking about, Peregrine? Yeah, Peregrine School for, or Miss Peregrine School for Gifted Children or something like that. Okay, so I've read, like, I think three or four of the books in the series, and I saw the movie. 
I would actually like to see that made into a movie according to the book instead of what. Now, what they made was great. I enjoyed it as its own. But it was not like the book. By the way, I would like to see something like that. Mm -hmm. I get rebooting or remaking a movie because technology has changed. Superhero movies is a great example of this. If you look at any superhero TV show or movie <coughs> from the invention of movies and TV straight up to almost the turn of the millennium after that technology jumped in the late 90s it changed superhero movies forever and we could do things we could never do before. And yet, mm -hmm. but that is not a reason to give up on story or characters or anything else. Mm -hmm. Or a reason... Yeah, they became reliant. Yeah. Yeah, it's a crutch. Um, and also, why do they keep on, as Chris mentioned earlier, reinventing the wheel? And let me... Now, I get making your own version, but to rewrite the whole base story... Mm -hmm. Um, unless if you're doing a, you know, oh, what if type situation. I Batman. Suppose. Well, Batman has had a couple reinventions for, here's a, yeah. you know, Victorian yeah, Batman. Yeah. Here's, you know, what if Superman was born, landed in Russia? Those are interesting stories because they're standalone. They're separate. They're a, uh, this could be. Spider-Man. How many times have we rebooted Spider-Man Spider -Man. in the yep. last 20 years? Right. And we need, an, never need another origin <laughs> story or, as I've said before, do it as a montage in the opening credits. Andrea? Right. We do need an origin story, so this is on my list. The origin story of Fred. <laughs> Kevin, yeah. <laughs> that would be a great movie. I would watch that. It, it would be R-rated. R-rated <laughs> and like a Walter and Gromis like... Oh, yeah. Style. Um, yes, yes, play stop motion. It would be perfect medium to depict Fred, yeah. So everybody say hello to Trin, who just popped in for the hey, tavern. Hey, Trin, what's up, bro? Hey, Trin, hey. You all right? I'll drink to that. There I'll we drink go. To we'll drink to the Trin. It's nice to see you. We'll drink to that. Or, as she became known during poker this past weekend... Trinrito. That's right. Mm -hmm. Wrapped in a burrito blanket, we have the Trinrito. <laughs> see, now Trinrito. Now I have my Trinrito and my baby shark. She's a little spicy, but I think she's chicken instead of beef. <laughs> the shade. That's okay. I like white meat. Yeah? <laughs> There's nothing wrong. I like a good... Anyhow, Andrea, what else you got here? Living swiftly. Um. Okay, so a movie I would like to see. We've all seen Toy Story, right? And we've all seen Chucky. Okay. I would like to see the 80s toys, the action figures, and, and dolls do a Toy Story meets Chucky movie. Oh. Like Strawberry Short and Rainbow Bright, G.I. Joe. Isn't that called Small Soldiers? It was in the 90s. It, it's similar, yeah. I don't know the movie you're about. Yeah. But no, you need like... Uh, yeah. Icon. Uh, by the way, Andrea, I love that in that you're like strawberry shortcake, etc. Not like Star Wars action figures. You're like, I want to see because we have that. the blue muffin chick who we all sniffed way too many times every time we ran across yeah. her. Kick some fucking Chucky ass. It's, uh, yeah, I'd watch that. What you talking or about, Travis? We could also have Puppet Master come in there. See, no, that would be interesting, right? Real quick, let me say Vivid Puppet has arrived. Hey! Uh, sorry. <clears throat> Hi, Amy. There we go. Good to see you. Welcome. But yeah, it's uh, Chucky and Puppet Master toys versus Strawberry Shortcake. Who else did you mention? I didn't mention G.I. Joe, but there was another. Rainbow, Rainbow Bright. Rainbow the Bright. Original G.I. Joe. Oh, and Ken from Ken and Barbie. <laughs> Not Barbie, but Ken. Yeah. I mean, I'd love... I love. Like I'm mentally editing everything I could have just said, and I've got nothing because I edited. Go on, yeah, Chris. Done. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to see a Dungeons and Dragons movie that actually worked. 
<laughs> like, it's hard to capture that, like, group dynamic that most D&D groups, like, fall apart into, which is kind of the movie you want to see. Like, right. them trying to be a serious, like, Lord of the Rings type party. Give me Lord of the Rings, but, like, throw in that D&D fall apart crumble and actually put the D&D label on there instead of that weird, crappy D&D movie we got with wait. the really bad but, but wait, and wait. Kevin, I know Kevin has something. Part D and Dungeons and Dragons two came out, and I saw it on Sci Fi. And each time before they went to a commercial, they're like, "Don't split the group." And when they come back, the group splits. That one was better than part one. Okay, Some funny. things were better, but like <laughs> the effects were worse. Yeah, right. mm, mm, I get mm. No. <laughs> mm, I have a confession. I have them both in my collection. I do, too. That's okay. Go ahead, Kevin. I'm sorry. Well, we totally we, talked over this, this yeah. one. <laughs> yes, I went, when, when the original Jumanji came out, uh, several of my friends who are either D&D players or who play role-playing games that are very uh, similar in construct all said, what a great movie. Love the concept. You know, the whole idea of playing a board game in real life, having a, a greater than life impact on some kind of supernatural game event. But what a load of bullshit Jumanji itself was. Why weren't these guys just playing D&D? &D? So <laughs> what I'm hearing is we need a... That would have been way cooler and you could have had way weirder shit happen so, to them. So we the need to get... If they were having a game of D &D. So we need to get the Dungeons & Dragons cartoon rewritten into a movie form. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I will give you one step better. We should take our D&D &D group with Little Bear <laughs> Trash Panda and make a movie. Yeah, all of our crazy... Uh, it'd be, I, I get the feeling it'd be a very niche movie, it'd be one of those cult classics that um, 60 years from now, underground people will be like, mate, if you've never heard of this, you're not even a movie fan. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair enough. You see, uh, so sometimes you'll see a movie or, or a TV series, watch a TV series, and the way it finally ends is like, oh man, that is the perfect setup for next one. Black sails. <clears throat> Perfect yes. setup to lead right into Treasure Island. Where the fuck is the Treasure Island? Come on, bring on the damn yeah. Treasure Island, you guys. Yeah. See, Andrew and I watched season one and two. We bought season three, haven't watched it yet because season two got so slow. Andrea, it's it's yeah. worth sticking with. And are you if you're paying for that, then um, we're not going to have this conversation on air. But you need to message me, <laughs> <laughs> Andrea. So I did start watching season three. Okay, it's good, but holy shit, I had to stop because that shit was intense. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's one of those shows. It, it went through weird periods where a whole bunch of shit happened all at once, and then there was a right. quiet pack. But I, I actually quite like that, because in terms of pacing, it was almost like they lulled you into a full sense of security, where you got used to the whole social dynamics of the characters interacting. And then all of a sudden, shit fucks everything Damn. up. Yeah. yeah. It scarred me a little bit. <laughs> but that's the point. Good TV and cinema should. And yeah. All the mm. stuff they make these days is so vanilla and so safe because they want to. They don't want to offend anyone. Well, it should mark that's, you that's in some way. Not necessarily scar yeah. you, but it should definitely change you yes. and make you feel something. Oh, I, I yeah. I'm like, I was a mess, and I'm like, okay, I have to turn it off. <laughs> Andrew, I, mean, I feel like for American cinema, will do that because you get some of these modern like animes. And, like, granted, that's its own art form, but some of those, you're like, oh, this is a cute, lovely, little, like, happy-go-lucky anime, and by episode four, you're going, oh, my God, what, what, what the hell is happening? What the, uh, I need to go hide in the corner now. So, like, you know, I, I think that's the American style of, yeah, let's make it flight and luffy, fluffy and fun for all ages. It could be flight and luffy. 
I, I had a teacher when I was in high school. She decided um, it was a great idea to get her 10-year-old or take her 10-year-old nephew to see Excalibur. It's yeah. about King Arthur, right? What can be wrong? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Andrea, I have the story about the four-year-old in Sausage Party in a dark theater. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, God. A yeah, I thought the yeah. kid wouldn't get the adult references till you know, the food started dying horribly by chewing, and then the kid is screaming, and Andrea and I have three reactions. One is, oh, poor kid. Second is, why the fuck did you bring a kid in here? Third is, <laughs> they could need some therapy. <laughs> yeah, because we looked at each other. You could just see that it just as we just went through the three things till we're like... <clears throat> <clears throat> so who else has something they'd like to see down the road? I, I have one last Go ahead. more and, and I'm done. Steven Spielberg, I know you check out the show. So Steven Spielberg, you did such a hell of a job on Band of Brothers. Please, 761st Tank Battalion, bring it on. HBO, 10 episodes, you can do it. Go, man. <laughs> And go to bring Tom Hanks in on that, in some aspect, yes. even if it's just producer. Well, yeah. he did Band of Brothers with Steven Spielberg. I don't remember what role they each took. You know, Spielberg, they might have both been producers. I don't know. They were both producers, producers, Spielberg director. Um, Tom Hanks' son was even in one episode. It's, uh, and by the way, a few people who stand out in Hollywood that I would love to have in any production just because they're nice. First of all, Keanu Reeves, who we can debate on his acting skill. Fucking super nice guy from everything I've seen. Yeah. And Tom Hanks, too. Doesn't mean they're the only ones, but they're standouts. Yeah. Andrew, what else you got I'm on your list? Promote. Go ahead, Kev. I was just going to say, I'm all for promoting actors who aren't wankers. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Or any actor that's been on the Muppet Show, just because apparently they can take a joke. <laughs> yeah, fair play. <laughs> yeah. You know you've made it when you've been on the Muppet Show. <laughs> Even the lesser you light version. I've made it because I've been on with you guys. Fair point. Phenomenon. Phenomenon. <laughs> Andrew, what else you got on your list? Okay. So I have two more. I don't know how relevant they are, but the Opa Loop is either an origin story or how they take over the world. So like a Minions origin movie story. of the Oompa Loompas. That'd be amazing. Like, no, I'm thinking more like a Wolverine origin story, you know, with yeah. like some horrendous lab experiment that creates the Oompa Loompas in a military experiment lab somewhere. Actually, they did an origin story in the Johnny Depp one where they were like wow. found in the aboriginal forest or something <clears throat> or the depths of africa they touched yeah, on I'm, it i'm i'm not buying that <laughs> but they touched on it there that's why either an origin story or how they take over the factory which take over the world you know i'm okay with that i think that'd be fun like i said kind of minion style by the way minions when you look at the despicable me movie minions was a crap movie um, I'm all for it because the chance that Oompa Loompas speak everything in rhyme increases my chances of script writing work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they're going to do dirty limericks the whole time, Kev. Yeah, you watch me. <laughs> yeah, he's got a whole book. Yeah, I know. I have a whole book. Or we could do like um, Charlie and the Chocolate Fa Charlie and the Chocolate Factory 50 years later. Yeah, where Charlie's Whatever getting happened, old, and he's starting to fade, and he decides to pass it over to Oompa Loompas, and that's what they've been waiting for. Charlie and the chocolate-flavored dairy product factory. <laughs> <laughs> Almond milk candy bars, soy milk candy bars, and the Oompa Loompas just like all Rambo, smearing chocolate on their face and crawling through the... <laughs> I think that would be a that would be awesome. I'd watch it. 
I'm wondering who would play who who would play sixty year old Charlie. Oh, wow. Nick Cage. Um, I said, uh, yeah, I mean, this will mean nothing <laughs> to you guys probably. But just this is really weird mental image flash here. There's an, a, a British stand up comedian called Rob Beckett. Who's got oh, huge yeah. teeth. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Happy, it's on Mock the Week quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For some strange reason, when someone's went, who would play adult Charlie? Rob Beckett left into my brain. I have no idea why. <laughs> it might just be the wine, but. Oh my god. Plain okay. Bird. First of all, Dave Plain says bird. Tom Hanks. I was going to suggest yeah, yeah. Kurt Russell, but Andrea, you want to read Flaming Bird's comment there? <laughs> I really do. <laughs> okay, oh so this is even better because we said this is an adult show and it may be porn. So, <laughs> Flaming Bird says, shit. I thought Andrea was going to say Charlie and the Chocolate Factory Fifty Shades of Grey. Wow. There we go, right there. Fifty Shades. I'll have you know, I didn't come here for kinky chocolate. But you can do some cool things with warm chocolate. Just saying. (laughs) Or cold chocolate. Frankly, it depends on your definition of kinky, Ed. (laughs) They leave you tied up with licorice ropes. You got to eat your way out. (laughs) Licorice. (laughs) <laughs> I've done that before. And by eat your way out, he doesn't mean of the ropes. Oh, um, no. That was eating my way in. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I get confused. See what you started there? Confused. Excited. It's tomato, all, tomato. It's all your fault, flaming bird. We blame you. That's great. Okay, Andrew, I see you looking back at the page. Go ahead, Kev. Am I the only person, as, as a Brit, am I the only person in the group amused by the connotation of that screen name as well the fact that that's one of my british friends and flaming bird phoenix rising from the ashes lovely yeah or in british slang flaming bird hot chick a bird being a slang for any woman and flaming being bloody annoying or irritating so oh, flaming oh bird is that fucking irritating woman <laughs> hi flaming bird <laughs> <laughs> that's funny now <laughs> A flaming bird all the time. Honestly, mate, I was down the pub the other night just trying to have a quiet pint, and that flaming bird was banging on in my fucking ear. So, I'd pay extra right, for Charlie, a bang on my ear. Yes. Like fish. Go on, Andrew. I, I speak, yeah. What was that movie we watched with like the ghost hunters? The British guy who worked for the um, cable company or okay. the internet company? <clears throat> it had. Oh, I can't. Nick Frost and Simon Pegg, and it was a British series about Nick Frost ran his own ghost hunting YouTube channel, and he worked oh, for a cable um, company. He needs to be oh, Charlie. Sh- sh- uh, yeah, he'd be an okay Charlie. That's Nick Frost. Nice. He's Charlie. What, Nick Frost. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can see Simon Pegg being. Charlie more than Nick Frost. I think Charlie would get fat as he got older. He lives in a chocolate factory. Uh, okay, right. You talking about your Charlie thirty years on concept? Or fifty or years on even. 50, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Then yeah, okay, all right. In that case, yeah, fair enough. Maybe. Yeah, it's uh, you know, kind of make a, more sense. Kind of annoying and bumbling, not good socially, kind of awkward and dumb, and you know, he hasn't had a lot of challenges. He's been rich and stuck in a factory. Did, He's not eccentric like. Did, yeah. Just for shits and giggles, do you know who I'd like to really, who I'd really like to see play an old Charlie from Charlie and Chocolate Factory? Uh, Bob Schwartz Dylan. Who? <laughs> Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> Is he alive? Yeah, man. So, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I hope so. <clears throat> he might be undead by now. <laughs> undead? Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> It'd be funny. Would yeah. Like? Oh, I, it would be funny. <laughs> See? Charlie with an disorder after his Google food issue. Google Bob Dylan's still alive. Very <laughs> good. Andrew, you know that? <laughs> what's your last one there? Okay. So, just cats. But not the CG movie Cats. 
just cats. Full length movie like the Instagram things, but instead of thirty <laughs> seconds. It's three hours, anybody, and they're just laying in the sun or licking their ass. Anybody remember mm-hmm. Faces of Death? Uh-huh. Maybe we could do that, but Faces of Cats. <laughs> By the way, they kind of have this, Andre, that. in that there's like channels that you can get streaming, probably on Pluto, where they've got the 300 channels of just cat videos. Doing They do. <laughs> they I know. I mean, there's a Twitch channel called like Adorable Cuties or something. Adorable like that. kittens. It's, uh, just yeah, kittens. Yeah. 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 We watch, or I watch that, and Andrea stares over my shoulder and pulls my hair. <laughs> and then she watches the channel over my shoulder sometimes too. <laughs> um. <laughs> Okay, so we've covered all that. How about in the last few minutes here, the last 10 minutes or so, we just move over to uh, porn. <laughs> I thought that's what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't, take a beer. Beer, beer. <laughs> I don't need a lot of it, but I'd like a little more story in my porn, please. I want to know why they're having sex. And I don't need... Well, that's fine. But I don't need 12 minutes of story and then 6 minutes of sex either. I'm just saying, can we get a fair balance here? You know, 90 (laughs) seconds to 3 minutes of, oh, this is why. Um, How about homemade porn? No, thank you, Gary. I will not turn my phone on for you. I've told you this already. (laughs) (laughs) So you want more movies like Caligula? Like the what? Caligula. Oh, no. you know the backstory with Caligula? How the actors were not told what else was going to be in it. They filmed their scenes. And then like all the porn scenes were like just put in after the actors were done. <laughs> Secretly recorded it. We saw you in the window, Gary. And besides, you, you like licked that 20 and put it on the window. We we're okay with it. It's yeah. a little red. We're okay with that if it's 20 bucks. That's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Too bad the possum ran off with the 20 bucks. That was more money we made in that, that was one possum. two minute and a half video than we've made in three years on podcasting. So there you go. <laughs> Ow. Carry on. Set everything off. <laughs> it's, it's all fine. I just lit my finger on fire. Yeah, that's fine. I thought it was so serious. But the good news is, cigar landed in the trash can and it was emptied earlier today, so nothing to catch flame. But uh, I'll have a nice callus or a blister on that fingertip right now. So the dangers of smoking. They're real, people. Okay. Don't bear that in mind. So what else we got here? What movies have we just not seen yet? And, uh... Oh, interesting. Hmm. Well, we've only got five minutes or so less, so I'm opening my a huge can of worms here, but... Why the fuck have we not seen more Star Wars movies that focus on some of the more amazing other characters in the Star Wars universe other than the <laughs> one fucking family? This is, well, how many times have I said this on these sh- these shows? I, I, I know, yeah. I, yeah, this is so, why I've prefaced this with, yeah. I know I'm opening a can of worms with five minutes to go. But... Andrea, you're shaking your head. What do you got? I'm just like, nobody knows. We, we, this is the debate. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, they've started, and with the new Disney Plus things that they have coming down the pipeline. True. With the exception of maybe the Obi Wan Kenobi series, right. because that one is a little more adjacent, it's, but I'm still interested in like that series. Like, give me Obi Wan Kenobi and Qui Gon Jinn doing their whole like crazy bring up the apprentice thing. I'm all for that. I thought it was taking place between Episode Three and Four. It is. Oh, it is. I I want early Kenobi. I want more Qui Gon Jinn in my life. 
Yeah. I want more Liam Neeson <laughs> as a Jedi. See, I, I agree with that. Um, my point was quite, um, it's kind of raised by something that came on a previous show we did a few days back with something that Ed said. Um, it's We've got all these other great characters there. Why have they spent nine movies focusing on the same damn family and everything has revolved around this one key theme about this one family when it's such an enormous universe and they spend so much energy, so much time, so much creativity fleshing out all of these other characters only for everything to pin off this one family that, yes, they're a huge central part of the Star Wars story, but they're only one central part of several central parts with a whole shitload of other really good parts attached to it. It just seems very centric that they've concentrated on just the Skywalker story all the way through. Money. Yeah. 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 Fair play. Yeah. But and I, I think, think that's why Mandalorian was such a big success. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. it was a deviation from the main Sty Scar blah, 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 Skywalker story. Well, sure, you're getting yeah. characters that were involved, and I am so looking forward to the Boba Fett seasons coming up. Because, <laughs> you know, yeah. And by the way, like, all those bounty hunters, nom, 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 nom. Rebels and Rogue mm -hmm. One, Rogue One, showed mm -hmm. the level of success. Solo showed the Absolutely. stop it. Give us the other yeah. stuff that we don't have a level of expectation and in or, Andrea, you're waving right. your hand? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm agreeing with you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, That's a really good point. Forward to the Ahsoka right. um, like yeah. series. What do you think because of while yeah, Wade. Wade. In her younger days, she was involved in the Skywalker story and was a big part of what happened and the growth and right. like, she needed all of that, but like, give us the like, Oh fuck! What was her code name in Rebels? I forget. Um, Fulcrum. 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 Yeah. But like, give me the we're, fucking Fulcrum. We're like, not getting story. that. We're getting Rosario Dawson after Episode uh, Six, before Episode Seven. What do you think of the casting of right. Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka? She's okay. That's how I feel. <laughs> it's. Um, not what I would have expected or chosen, but that doesn't. I was cool with it and everything until I went back and watched it again. And right. I was like, mm -hmm. I caught that She's the first time. She's not as athletic and nimble as the character is supposed to be. Well, that's even also... in her older age. Right. Like she did all of her own stunts and things, but she is like Rosario Dawson is not a like trained martial artist fighter. Right. which Ahsoka is, and she uses her agility more than any of her other skills. But that could have been the 16, 19-year-old Ahsoka. As an older person with a few knee problems, I get it. Um, sure. Also, let's face yeah, it. Jedi. That's true. But let's face it. <laughs> the direction in the last couple episodes of Mandalorian went downhill. So, with a good director on Ahsoka, because we've seen Rosario Dawson do good roles. Yeah. yeah. So, if we get us a good director and writer, I think there's potential. It's a start. Yeah. You have to start. So, it's, it's a good start. At least there's a start. That's fair. I mean, I also really want a Darth Revan series with... Um, <laughs> Yeah, let's get uh, a let's, villain story, right? Yeah, let, let's give us, you know... Give us a the Thrawn old series. Oh, thank you. I was waiting for my moment to say that. Oh, sorry, thank Kevin. God, I'm not the only one. Well, just... Uh, Thrawn, Thrawn is such an incredible character in the Star Wars universe, and there's been so little done about him. What's been done about him has really been right, kind of like a skim over the surface. Have you read the new Thrawn book? How new are we talking? A couple of years, 2013, 2014. No. You might want to check oh, that out. Uh, there was possibly, a yeah. Well. What, Chris? There was a sequel in 2018 as right. well. Right. Yeah, that I definitely haven't read. The older one I might have, yeah. It, well, he was, of course, in the 80s with the other series that kind of got legends, not real, <laughs> no longer canon. 
But they've brought him back, whether due to fan popularity and smart marketing or whatever. But I, I so, yeah. did read this book and uh, I put it, I put it down because I was like five chapters in and just yeah his story was interesting but the rest of it was eh, or maybe it was the narration there was something about it I went mm -mm. but the so background there seems to have been this, there seems to have been a weird pattern with the the telling of Thrawn's story in terms of like the extended universe books and stuff where some of it's been really good and it's gone into quite a lot of depth but they he he is quite a significant character in the extended universe. Good night, he Dave. He seems to be marginalized by the writers. Good night, Dave. Good night, Dave. Um, I think... Yeah, he, he seems to be kind of treated like a, a, a side character, like a bit character. But actually, the events that involve Thrawn have quite significant impact. Well, I think it's they... Just, it seems like a missing point that they've not developed that more. I think they made him too solid to begin with, too already in his role in this other book where you, you don't feel like there's going to be this arc where he goes from somebody that is one way and there's reasons he becomes how he is. He starts out that way. So a lack of character development. Uh, I think that might be it. Andrew, you're waving your paper. Did you have a thought? Oh, I was moving. Okay. Um, so let's wrap this up. We're in the last couple minutes here. Let's go around. And Kevin, do you have some closing thoughts on the topic? No, really, no. I need the, the one I brought in at the top that I think really less than we really want to see this movie or that movie. I think it's more a general shift in intelligent moviegoers wanting to see people stop dumbing down genres for the widest possible commercial availability mm -hmm. so that people actually have a film that they can get their teeth into. Yeah. Chris? Uh, I would agree. I would also say that I would like to stop seeing remakes and redos of the same thing that we've already seen and not making it their own and changing it in some way. And now we have, you know, six different Batman origins and five Spider-Man, you know, like something new would be great. Ed? Nothing new to say in closing that we haven't said before. I mean, reiterating what, uh, shit. <laughs> Kevin? Kevin said, you, Travis, earlier, with uh, Justice League, I mean, that is it right there. You know, we had it all dumbed down just for this two hour movie, just to yep. make some money because we had this name. And then they come out with the four hour movie and they have just so nailed it. Let's it, hope it he does time. it with uh, yeah. Batman versus Superman too. Yeah. Andrea? Uh, it's a very good example. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt, but that's an excellent example. Going back to what we were saying earlier about that movie is that it's two phenomenally different mm -hmm. storytelling moments between the short commercial version of that movie and the original director's intended vision of that movie. And it's a very good example currently, if people can go and see that, of what we're talking about, the difference between making a movie for money making a movie for the sake of the story yeah so so wait you're telling me it is worth my time to go back and re-watch batman v superman because like yes i want that two hours of my life back it, it was terrible <laughs> and i don't know why I wasted my time no what i'm saying is okay look. if zach can grab it and do what he wanted to do with it initially instead of what came out like he's done with justice league that would be good. Yeah, that'd be worth it. Chris, my input would be that I watched it the other night because I was bored and I figured I'd seen it once and it was really disappointing. At worst, it will disappoint me again, but I can't see anything else on at the moment that's better to watch than this. And by the end of it, I stopped what I was doing, turned everything else off and watched the movie. Again, and that, surpri and that surprised me because, like you, my reaction to the original take that came out was 
completely apathetic. Expectation mm. like, ruins man. movies. When you go in expecting something, go in lowballing. Go in expecting crap, and then be happy when you get yeah, entertained. Yeah, I, I think there's, you're right. There is an extent to that. But then, even if you apply that principle to the first cut of that movie, it was fucking terrible. I enjoyed it. it. I was entertained. Bad. It was. It, they could have done so much with it. Right. It was shit. And then I watched this other version the other night, and about a third of the way through, I turned off everything else I was doing with that one in the background and focused on that. And by the end of it, I was like, I'm so glad I bothered to spend the time to watch yeah. this. So, yes, I would go and watch it, and I'd be intrigued to know whether, as someone else who was, meh, Let me ask you, one, this whole time, feel different Kevin, 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 I need a clarification. This whole yeah. time, have you been talking about Justice League or Batman versus Superman? Justice League. Chris, clarify that for you. Because Chris was talking about Batman versus Superman. Oh, okay, sorry. And that's what I'm yeah. saying. If Zach can redo that into his yeah, original okay. vision. Um, mm -hmm. Andrea, what's your closing thoughts, please? I would like to see more of the characters you don't normally see have a movie. The underdog, the less to know. Bring them out into the light. Yeah. And my recap is, again, kind of echoing everything here. <clears throat> Stop giving us prequels. You gave us a backstory, <laughs> we're okay. Move forward with your story. Give us characters mm -hmm. we don't know that we can learn to love instead of characters we have a level of expectation for that no matter how great of a job you do, you're going to fail in one way or another. Um, <clears throat> and if you don't have good characters and a good story, I don't care what your special effects are. Yeah. On the other hand, if you do have good characters and do care, have good story... I still do care what your special effects are, so if you're not doing them right, don't fucking do them. Go back to the Hitchcock-style cinematography if you need to. Um, I don't know. Velocipaster, they got some <laughs> up there special effects. But that was entertainment value because of Goodbye. that. And there is a way to do that. And yeah, there are shining examples. By the way... I rewatched Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Couldn't make it all the way through because it just does not hold up. Does not. Okay, let me do the closing here for everybody. Let's wrap this episode up. This was awesome. We've burned an hour or more here. <clears throat> if you guys have thoughts about what you'd like to see, you can email us at talkofthetavernshow at gmail.com. That's talkofthetavernshow. We'll talk about that shit. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Um, we'll bring it up. Um, if you have topics you'd like to hear us discuss, let us know. Also, um, you can join us live and see us on camera discussing this at twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk. That's twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk. Other than that, I want to thank everybody here. Dave, Kevin, Ed, everybody else who I'm forgetting. Gary, um, <laughs> who threw... <laughs> bits who subscribe so they can be part of this thank you so much for all the support with those subscriptions the hosts the raids picking up the t-shirts and the glasses and the flasks and whatnot i need a closing toast thank you also want to thank everybody who supports via paypal every month who support via patreon on top of the subscribing to the channel for the live broadcast here's to you guys that make us have a good time. Yeah. Cheers. You're just doing that because Dave's gone. Thank you for that there, Ed. You know, damn right it is. <laughs> <laughs> not cheered. X1000. But don't worry, you've almost caught up to him. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, let's get a uh, quick quote from Drunken Cogsley, who's just stuttering up a storm. <laughs> Now, if we had, you know, Starlink, maybe we wouldn't have that problem. Just saying, <laughs> referencing a different podcast that we did not too long ago. Um, everybody talks about the weather, but nobody does anything about it. Charles Dudley Warner. Here's to that. It's, uh... By the way, I have a quote we just entered the other day. What was it? I think it was number 96. Um, there we go. <laughs> Somebody, I said something and they put it up as a quote. I don't think even a doctor should see that far in. I said that on air. <laughs> Is in reference to gaping, speaking of movies and porn. <laughs> Let's do some closing music. We're out of here. 
Have a great week. Alright, good night. Thanks for joining us in the discussion. Later. You are the one thing that makes the show what it is. Don't forget to join us at the tavern next week. Until then, have fun, keep learning, and be good to one another. Now, raise your glass in good cheer. Enjoy the small moments every day. Enjoy the small moments, steamy dreams.